Welcome to a how-to in Unreal Engine 5. In this one, we're going to go through the process of introducing Nanite mesh meshes to your project. Now, you can actually download Nanite prepared meshes from Bridge if you've already got Bridge access to those meshes. However, I'm going to show you in this one how you can enable it for your current meshes as well. So in my content drawer down here, we have access to this ro uh, rock model I've got here. And open this up. And this is just a normal static mesh as it always has been in Unreal Engine 4 and everything else before now. However, with all these meshes, you can actually enable Nanite technology for this to be used instead. Now, using Nanite actually improves quite a few things. It improves uh, the rendering of time of it as well as the disk space it takes up. Now, in this case, this is not a great example because it's a quite a relatively low poly mesh. Um, but nonetheless, we're going to enable it and we'll uh, show you that process. So if you've already imported it in, it's fine. Go open up the static mesh and on the right hand side, you'll find Nanite settings. Here you can click enabled and then hit apply changes. And that's going to do its thing and turn this into a Nanite set object. So to show you this in action, if I drag this into the world, like so and if i turn the visualization on now for nanite triangles you can now see the triangles there as i said it's quite low poly so well, relatively low poly so you'll see the triangles are not that small okay that's totally normal okay if you've got a static mesh that's got loads of them though you're going to see a greater improve uh, improvement with the performance of the rendering and loading and storing of those assets so if you've got a high, very high poly mesh that you've brought in from ZBrush or something, bring it into Unreal and you can tick that Nanite button to make it a Nanite uh, based mesh. Now Nanite based meshes are rendered slightly differently and they are stored slightly differently too. Now when it comes to other uses inside the engine, Nanite made from static meshes like this need to have other settings adjusted too. So when you open this up, you'll see you've got position, precision and proxy triangle percent so what this means is if you think about all the things that require uh, like collision okay and doing like line traces this enables us to use a proxy model as its collision setting essentially so what this does you've got two options here position position is where it places how accurate it will be to the original uh, shape and size uh, it will look at each triangle and get them as precise as it wants to be auto is pretty good but you can also override this to your different sizes you've got here and the proxy triangle percent is how accurate you want it to be to the original mesh now if your mesh has lower than uh, 2000 triangles in this case this one does it's only got 1999 then you're not going to see any difference it will just use its original mesh as the collision mesh However, if it's got more than 2,000 triangles, by all means, whack this on and you can then use that to give the game engine a proxy mesh. So you won't see it, but the engine will use it for the things that require precision in terms of rendering, uh, collision and various other things like that too. You can also enable Nanite when you import a static mesh into your scene. In the normal dialog box, if you just scroll in there, you'll find Nanite options there too, which look very similar to this. And that's Nanite, basically. So Nanite is a brand new way of rendering meshes, and it typically, most of the time, you'll want to use it. There's a few occasions where you don't want to use it, and that's for things like um, that are where the triangles are going to be big uh, on camera and uh, maybe not occluding anything. So for example, the sky sphere would be a bad example because its uh, triangles are very large. And because of that, they are also not occluding anything. It's the thing in the distance, not blocking any uh, anything at all. So it's not the best thing to use for Nanite. However, meshes inside your scenes are very good to use because you're not only are they occluding, they have loads of triangles and they're usually small, but also you have many instances of them. So this one is good because we'll have loads of these in our scene to make it look all exciting and and cool okay um and you can and you can build these meshes up quite good and it performance wise will be better under nanite so use nanite if you're using meshes that are many in your scene they have many triangles and they're not occluding anything oh so they are occluding stuff as well it's very useful for that sort of rendering 
hopefully that you enjoyed this as uh, first this is my first tutorial in Unreal Engine 5 um, there'll be many more to come with regarding the various uh, specific features in Unreal Engine 5 in the run up to its release in 2022 if you want to see more of my content, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Ailey for more UE4 and UE5 video content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.